So okay. let me um, uh, welcome you, Professor Leister and Dr. Erbe, in this um, interview. And of course, the, the, the reason for the interview is uh, to discuss uh, your, your paper that was recently published in the International Journal of Cardiovascular Imaging. The title is uh, a very interesting paper, Feasibility and Diagnostic Reliability of Quantitative Flow Ratio in the Assessment of uh, non culprit Lesions in Acute Coronary Syndrome. And um, I read it with a, lo a lot of interest. It has a lot of value. And um, that is what we are going to discuss. And before we do that, uh, could you please um, introduce yourselves uh, before we go to the questions? Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Hans. Um, I'm very happy to be here today with you and to have a small discussion about this interesting project. Um, my name is David Le Professor David Leistner. I'm the executive senior physician at the Charité University Medicine Berlin at Campus Benjamin Franklin, and I'm the head of interventional cardiology there. We do an our cath labs in the Charité overall nearly 10,000 um, coronary procedures per year here at the campus with uh, about 2,800 PCIs per year. We do more than 500 cases of TAVI each year, so quite a large center. And for myself, I try to be at least two complete days per week in the cath lab, and I'm doing around 500 to 600 um, procedures per year. And yeah, we are handling with a lot of things, with imaging, with functional analysis, and I'm very happy to have a great team um, with me. And one of the team members is Aslian Erbay, and she's here today. Um, two, and maybe Aslian, you will introduce yourself quickly with one sentence. Yes, um, many thanks for the invitation. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, my name is Aslihan Erwey. I'm a resident doctor at the Charité University Medicine Berlin and doing clinical research in interventional cardiology with a main focus on coronary physiology, functional assessment, and uh, next to the invasive assessment now, um, the angiography-based QFR evaluation. Yeah, really, thank you so much. And uh, also for, for those who are listening to this interview, you have a, an enormous experience also with the, not only, of course, in physiology and, and interventional cardiology, but also with the QFR. And, uh, and what we have seen from, from your work, not only in this, publication, but also from earlier work and also um, courses that we have done with you and uh, say an, an excellent uh, quality of the QFR analysis that you do and, and many, many cases also. It's not that you've just had done a hundred <laughs> cases, but you have done in the meantime, uh, at, at least a thousand, if not more cases with very high quality. So it's really a, a great pleasure to, uh, to have this uh, interview with you and, and hopefully in the future also more. Uh, uh, Professor Leisner, um, could you summarize the, this particular paper? What is the main message that uh, that we can read from this? Well, I think, as you know, um, several studies have demonstrated the feasibility and the safety of hemodynamic assessment of non um coronary arteries and lesions in the setting of acute coronary syndrome using FFR. Um, QFR is an angio-based fast FFR computation validated with very good agreement and diagnostic performance um, with FFR in the setting of chronic coronary syndromes. However, the feasibility and the diagnostic reliability of QFR assessment during PCI for acute coronary syndrome is unclear till now. And therefore, we enrolled 321 patients with acute coronary syndrome and a multi-vessel disease who underwent PCI and were planned for staged PCI of at least one more non culprit lesion. These patients underwent serial post hoc QFR analysis. Um, in some, these were more than 500 non culprit vessels um, that were analyzed retrospectively. The median time interval between the primary and the stage PCI was 49 days, and the QFR in the non culprit coronary arteries did not change between the acute and the staged measurements with a really strong correlation of 0.994 and a very good agreement between the two measurements. And 
Therefore, the QFR is, if you assess it during the index ACS procedure, has a sensitivity of 95%, a specificity of um, 93%, and a diagnostic accuracy, which I think is the most important um, value of 94%, to predict a QFR below 0.A, so ischemic um, vessel um, area at the time of the stage PCI. And therefore, I think we try to validate QFI as a very helpful tool also for the setting of echo coronary syndrome. Yeah, yeah, I think this is really, uh, thank you so much. This is really, I think, the, f the first paper where you describe, um, say, pre uh, or at this, the, the, the original. Uh, a PCI the, prior to the PCI and the stage procedure, and uh, and where you have such a a, say, a, a great uh, correspondence between uh, the measurements, and um, as you mentioned, you had selected uh, 321 lesions with uh, 60, 642 um, lesions, and you excluded a total of 129 vessels for various reasons and. Uh, maybe Dr. Arbe can can uh, discuss that also. Why why were they excluded? What was the were the most important uh, reasons for that? Yes, um, given to the retrospective nature of the study, we excluded these 129 vessels due to angiographic criteria. Um, there are some patients with total occluded non-culprit vessels which were excluded. And other reasons where uh, too much overlapping or foreshortening of the target vessel, low contrast filling, a missing second projection at least 25 degrees apart, which is mandatory for QFR analysis, and all these angiographic criteria which should be fulfilled for a successful high quality QFR analysis. Yeah. Yeah. And that is, of course, yeah, the, the fake of a re retrospective analysis then. You, you lose some you lose some data that that is well known and that is of course that the images were not acquired uh, in initially according to the QFR mm -hmm. say uh, acquisition guidelines so that is quite normal and you see also in uh, in prospective studies that yeah the, uh, the the number of cases that you lose is usually not more than than two percent huh? in, in retrospective it can be as high as 20 percent because yeah in, initially uh, the acquisition was not done according to the QFR guidelines, so that is that is quite normal. So you see exactly here the same uh, uh, the same effect. And as I mentioned already, has the high quality of your work, and um, it is also given in um, in Figure Two, where you show at um, the results at the time of ECS was the QFR was 0.79, and uh, and also at the state procedure. So this is of course uh, the textbook example, but it also shows, and we will also uh, in the uh, the final edit of this interview also show this particular figure, but it, it shows exactly, uh, and you mentioned already, uh, Professor Leisner, about the high accuracy, but you see here exactly the same number uh, initially and also uh, and also later on, and 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 that is of course also due to uh, yeah the high quality of your work. So would would you would you comment on that? Do you do something special to get those high qualities? I mean, you have such an enormous experience in the meantime. Yes, many thanks for this nice words. Um, it's been almost four years ago that I did my first QFR analysis, and in this time the software um, has been further developed. It's got more user-friendly, the workflow got easier, and what I have learned in this time is that um, the better the image quality, the easier and faster the QFR analysis and the more accurate um, analysis. The key for a successful QFR is for sure a good image quality based on suitable image acquisition, good contrast filling and avoiding of vessel overlap and foreshortening. Since we analysed many retrospective data, we cannot influence the image acquisition anymore, but we can still select suitable images. So the first thing I'm always doing is to have a look whether there are suitable projections with good contrast and less overlap and for shortening available and uh, the following steps with the auto detection of the path line and contours allow us the fast calculation of hemodynamic data so it's better to spend a few more minutes for the image 
selection and in the CAS lab for the image acquisition, um, yeah. then proceeds quickly and had a bad analysis. Um, yeah. The total um, time for an analysis will be under five minutes, and I think it's really impressive to get uh, so much data um, in such a t short time. Yeah, yeah, it is, uh, of course, it is indeed, uh, say, relatively short time. And as we uh, further develop our techniques, the, the time will also be shorter and more automated, as you will see uh, soon also. Uh, but indeed, if you do the work well and you prepare everything properly, then it can easily be done in, in these uh, five minutes and you have that, that enormous uh, experience. So you, you mentioned also in the paper that there is um, this high agreement eh, between acute phase and the stage procedure with the difference of 0 0.008 QFR points, which is really very, very low. But there were also some difference in 26 lesions. So what were so special about those 26 lesions? Do you remember that? Yes, we have relevant functional difference in um, the 25 non-culprit lesions. And these are about 5% of all enrolled vessels. In 18 non-culprit lesions, hemodynamic relevance at time of ACS revealed to no more significance at time of stage procedure. And in contrast, eight patients with no functional non relevant non-culprit lesions got um, hemodynamic significance at time of stage procedure. So all these patients were around the threshold of 0.80 and um, the important questions would be whether these differences had a clinical impact. Um, yeah. And this would be a part of future studies to compare the, the outcome of patients in, with QFR results uh, in the range of 0 0.085 and uh, 0 0.75 yeah. uh, to have a more uh, specified look to those results and the outcome of the events. Yeah. which could be implemented. But in total, we have around 95 vessels which were feasible and uh, reliable assessed, uh, which is a really good result. Yeah. Yeah, I saw also, um, of course, with the uh, with the frame counts, we really make it patient specific. And, but if you look at your, your paper, you, we also I also saw that there is very small differences actually between the fixed flow QFR and, and the contrast flow. And, and, and that is what we will see also in the future where we are working now on an, an, an automated frame count method so that you don't have to do that manually anymore. But it's also funny that we see also in other papers that the fixed QFR at the average is very close to the contrast flow QFR. But I still believe that to make it very patient specific, and that contrast uh, flow QFR is then the, um, the the better approach where we determine this flow velocity. Uh, but what what do you think about that? Yes, as we know, uh, fixed flow QFR is considering uh, an empiric flow velocity of 0 0.35 meters per second. And contrast flow QFR is based on frame counting of the real contrast flow and promises to be more accurate. In the present analysis, we didn't see any difference between fixed flow and contrast flow QFR, as you mentioned, um, maybe around 0 0.01, which is negligibly small. Um, but when I'm thinking about other analyses, yes, I remember a really small number of cases with higher differences maybe in patients with a visual slow flow phenomenon, but um, due to the lack of data, um, it's not possible to say an evidence uh, and um, it's difficult to say whether this has um, an impact to our sure. analysis. Yeah, but, but anyway, we feel that also with uh, uh, the more patient specific we make it, the better it is, because then you really are uh, optimizing the, the image acquisition from that, for that particular patient. Yes, that's why we use the contrast flow QFR for the whole diagnostic performance analysis. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, 
Now, com coming also to an end of the, of the interview, um, I would like to ask also uh, Professor Leisner, so what is now the conclusion of your work and also the next steps uh, based on this? And, and I believe you have other papers also coming up uh, in, in high ranking uh, uh, journals. So what, what is next uh, based on your experience here, which is very valuable? Well, the present study for the first time confirmed the feasibility and the diagnostic accuracy of non culprit uh, coronary artery um, QFR during the index procedure for ACS. And this results support to use QFR as a valuable tool in patients with acute coronary syndrome to detect further hemodynamic relevant lesions with a very excellent diagnostic performance and therefore to guide in future further revascularization therapy. Actually, we have another study which is under review where we investigate the prognostic impact of this QFR measurements in the culprit after PCI as well as in the non culprit vessel. And um, actually, I'm not allowed to talk more in detail about these results, but I can say they are very promising. Mm. No, fantastic, and uh, we certainly look forward to to read that that paper soon. I'm I'm uh, I'm very hopeful, and you too, of course, that it will be accepted soon. And um, and then we look forward to reading that paper and also uh, say put it in our um, uh, QFR newsletters and also uh, other advertisements that we can do because uh, this is extremely valuable information, and uh, we certainly appreciate uh, uh, all your work in this. Uh, we also just mentioned earlier that uh, you are now also including patients for the favor 3 uh, trial. That mm -hmm. is also much, uh, much appreciated. Um, you did already, I believe, um, in a very short period of time, seven patients since you started two weeks ago. And uh, we look forward to uh, some more contributions from your side uh, into the, the, the really the outcome study, the, the favor 3 outcome study, because that is, of course, very valuable that we also show the non-inferiority against the FFR wire. Mm -hmm. So with, with this, I think we have come to the end of, uh, of this discussion. And um, I would like to thank uh, both of you for, for st stimulating discussions and for all your great work. And we look forward to, uh, to next publications and, uh, and your contributions also to the, uh, to the FAVOR 3 uh, trial. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome.